is Erica with Launching Lexis. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are going to continue our devotional series on gifting. We'll be finishing this series this week, but before we finish, we have to kind of deal with some of the things that um, need to be understood about spiritual gifting. So yesterday we did a review of the spiritual gifts. I read them all, so you want to go back and read all of the gifts that we talked about. Remember, there is not... Um, necessarily fully comprehensive because there are some gifts that we didn't discuss that people would more than likely scholars would more than likely agree are actually a gift noted notably mentioned in the scriptures however we don't have time to go through everything so bear with us on that however uh we in addition to talking about that we talked about how the gifts work in concert together remember i talked about to accomplish a task i'm using all of my fingers i'm using my wrist i'm using my arm to do something to accomplish something so i want to be clear that when i say the gifts work in concert together i do mean people individual gifts meaning like different people have different gifts and they all work together but I'm also talking about you having more than one gift up and those gifts all operating together to perform a particular thing and so you need to recognize that um, we're not limited to one gift per person <laughs> um, some people have many gifts and they operate in concert together in order to fulfill the will of God concerning that particular person but then also we all need to work together collectively as groups with different gifts or or people with different gifts so that we can do the same thing again accomplish the purpose that God has set before us so now I'm going to stay in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 and we're going to look at the 22nd verse and we're going to talk about the protection of the gifts how we can care for the gifts correctly and this is quite interesting so you have to kind of work go with me through um through my understanding of the passage because there's a, there's a lot of layers in this passage that maybe are necessarily apparent. So let's start. And so we're in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 22. It says, in fact, some people, some parts of the body uh, that seem weakest at least, at summary, ugh, and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. And so we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen while the more honorable parts do not require the special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. And this makes our harmony uh, for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one is honored, then all the parts are glad. Okay. So what's happening here? We're looking at this passage in so many layers here. So let's kind of break down. For one, what are they talking about? Some have are weakest and some are least important. And so really, remember, he's referencing the body. And he's talking about in the body, there are some things that people love to look at, like faces, right? We look at our faces to recognize one another. And there are other things that people don't love to look at, like maybe toes, okay? <laughs> so the people are like, mm, your toes, not so much, but I love to look at your face. We use people's faces to to identify them we speak from our faces so our faces are typically going to be considered more honorable right then maybe our toes are considered honorable but if a person has had toes all their life and they, they they have actually been using those toes to continue to walk we really need to value those so we protect them right we put them in socks we put them in shoes we keep them clean um we keep them taken care of you know uh, pedicured and whatnot so that they are protected um and cared for in a specific way likewise we also take care of our faces right hopefully washing them and, and grooming them appropriately as well however um they most people would say i i definitely need my face i don't know how much more important my toes would be than my face and so we may feel like we have more value or or honor for the face than we do for the toes however it's important to recognize that the toes have their own purpose they're not doing what the face does but it, they're still important and we need to recognize that their importance has a lot to do with their function and even though their function is not necessarily visible or thought about all the time it's still important an important function right toes help us to balance help us to be able to walk correctly and um, keep 
keep ourselves moving forward uh, as we as we're being mobile. A face doesn't have any part in that por- portion of it. However, we do need our face to be able to see because our eyes are there, um, our ears and nose and mouth are there. So, and then it has to do with our physical appearance. So it's more obvious what the face does than necessarily thinking about the toes all the time. We don't probably think about them all the time, and we may consider them a little bit less honorable when it comes to gifting though um how do we kind of make it make this connection well what i think about when i when i read this passage one of the layers that i that i peel back is that well really what's happening here sometimes is that there's some giftings that happen that people don't fully understand and we went through a lot of the giftings but there's some giftings that can be considered controversial or giftings that when they operate they really need to be operated with a great deal of wisdom and discernment and not just blah, 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 you know, someone using this um, spiritual gifting. And so there's a lot of reservation when it comes to those gifts, and it should be, right? So if a person, for example, has the gift of prophecy or the gift of miracles, even though it would seem like, well, yeah, miracles, you should just go out and be using all the miracles because this is a spiritual gift and it's great, or you should just go out and prophesy to everybody you see because it seems like it's great. Um, Any person who has maybe even tried that or seen that will find out very quickly that not every person will receive the those gifts and they're not necessarily for everybody in the world to see so not necessarily for the television um, uh, audience to watch why because the scripture says let not your good be evil spoken of and sometimes um, if we put if we're not wise we can let our good be evil spoken of and not really be aware of it and so what does that say not that we hide gifts of prophecy or miracles but that we that we know how to use them we don't hide necessarily our toes out we people have their toes out all the time you know we see them however when we're when we're showing them it's at times when it's appropriate we're not just letting drawing attention to our toes all the time so people could just look at them that's not a part of the process so we we're showing our face right we're showing our face that's not hidden but we're but we're not always um but we're not always running away uh, and to to expose our toes to people. And there's a reasoning that again it goes with this with this concept is that there some some things need to be treated with different value and different honor, and they need to be placed in a position in which they can be appreciated rather than being despised. And the scripture just let not your good be evil spoken of is a very, very pertinent scripture for the use of giftings and the honoring of, of giftings. Some gifts are put people right in the front lines and they're in, they're in the front and that's how the gift has to be used. People will know that you have the gift and it'll be obvious because you'll be working in it. Other gifts are not for that intention and for that purpose. The important lesson here though is to remember again why why there's a, this uh why we're using this example of the body is that we don't say because a person is in the back or doing things that are less noticeable that they have no value we don't say that about them we say to them we appreciate the work that in the contribution that you make because if you didn't make your contribution it would impact the way my contribution could be made and remember although i don't when i'm lifting this um when i'm lifting this this l you may not understand all the things that are happening but there are numerous body parts that are helping me to hold up this figure there's uh, numerous body parts that are helping me to raise my hand those hand those body parts may not be seen and they may not be getting the honor maybe my hand is the only thing that's getting the honor however despite them getting honor or not getting honor they are doing the work and so they should be we should know that they should be respected even if we value we view them as weaker or less honorable in the situation and so what does he end with he he goes back to the concept of look if if one part suffers they all suffer if one part is honored everybody's glad so everybody's honored to be honored and so it goes back to this holistic picture of even though it may seem like there is a striation there's a better and a worse really it has to do with what the function is and how that function can be most best presented towards the activity being provided or whatever it is that that is happening the service work uh 
leadership direction, you know, circumstances in which the gifts are being used, that's when we know which gift will stand out and which will sit in the back. And if uh, we are truly working in concert together, like the body works in concert together, there is no complaint from my, my, my feet are not complaining when people are looking at my face doing these videos, right? They're, they're like, oh, we don't mind, right? They're standing, they're on the floor right now balancing me as I'm sitting in this chair to make sure my position and posturing is correct. But they're they're doing their own job and they're okay with it. Um, so are we the same way though? Are we, when we look at our body, um, at the body of Christ meaning, are we okay with the fact that there's some gifts that are in front and some that are in the back, but that that doesn't mean that person is not valuable because they only have gifts that are the back gifts or it doesn't mean that a person is more valuable or even necessarily more knowledgeable because they're a person that's in front because often this happens too we have this um we have this illogical kind of movement in which we say, well, the people who are in the front clearly know the most. That's not necessarily true. Okay. But they have a position or a gifting that puts them in front and that's okay. Now they have a lot of requirements to be in front. However, um, that, that has to be understood on an individual basis as well. So it, it needs to be worked through that every gift has a value and a contribution. They all work together like we talked about, but in addition to all working together, some gifts, it is more important that they be used with a certain measure of wisdom because the reception of such gift could be, um, could be negative. People will receive them, some can receive some of these gifts with negativity or with, uh, if they're used with that lack of wisdom, it, they can be rebuked. And so we don't want to use the spiritual gifts of God in a way that causes people to be have an aversive reaction. We don't want our good to be evil spoken of. We don't want that to be the case. And so we have to really treat our giftings with honor. We have to treat them with respect. We need to know that everything that we do, we're called by the Lord to do it, is important to be done. And then lastly, we need to respect that other people have different gifts and they're just as valuable as us. And, and that's a good thing. So, we're praying for you. We're praying that you would heal, live, and grow. We're praying that you would, in studying these gifts and the layers, even in this particular passage, that you would unwrap those layers and see what what um, implications it has in your life and what, what the Lord is saying to you in, in particular. But what is it saying to the whole body as well? And we're asking that you would pray for us. We're praying that you're praying for us and that you would continue in prayer for us. Don't forget to pray for us. We, we're not forgetting to do devotionals with you. And so we need you to remember to pray for us and we will see you again tomorrow with another of our devotions don't forget we have an event this weekend if you want to attend um, it's a, a women's event on Saturday and then continue to pray because there's sometimes there's private events that I'm doing or speaking engagements that I'm doing um, and I need prayer for those things as well so uh, we will see you again tomorrow as we continue our devotional series until then be blessed <laughs>